What's up, everybody? Michael Silva here. Oh, my goodness. I got a show today that's going to be blowing your hair back. Look at this. Michael Burry recently tweeted this, and it had me thinking to revisit some material, and I found some shocking stuff. In October 1907, the Knickerbocker Trust failed due to risky bets that sparked a panic. Two banks failed after that, and it spread. When the RAND began, the Healthy Trust, J.P. Morgan, made a stand three weeks later, and the panic resolved, and the market bottomed. A stand was made this past weekend. So what is he cluing towards? Is he cluing that we might be potentially near a market bottom? That's what we're going to talk about in today's stock market brief. Like I said, I got some interesting charts. We're going to talk about the economic cycle and we're going to get into the stock market cycle and show you how I found market tops up into leading of 2022 and some very interesting data that could suggest we may be near a bottom. Let's get into it. Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to the show. Now, I'm showing you this chart. You, you probably remember it. I've used it many different times. And this is one of the charts that really helped me know that, hey, we could be moving into a stock market top here. And it's showing a couple of things. It's showing the cycle here of the stock market, okay? And then bl the blue is the business cycle. So you have the stock market and then you have the business cycle. And you can see the stock market, it leads the business cycle, right? So as the stock market heads up first, the business cycle then follows. And up here, you have the 11 sectors that make up the S&P 500. And why I felt like we were reaching a top in the markets was because we were seeing things like energy stocks really start to outperform. Okay, but then as we started saying, making the turn potentially saying, hey, this could be very well the top, it could be turning, you start to see defensive sectors outperform the S&P 500 on a relative basis. Now, if you remember, how did last year finish? Well, energy was up tremendously. And then what were the three other sectors that were good? Well, staples, healthcare, utilities. Okay, those are, as we're turning and making it, you know, pointing down. And then towards, you know, the end, financials weren't doing too bad either. They were up 8.31% on the year. That's not the case now. So are we actually making this turn? Well, there's some interesting charts that I want to revisit and we'll go over because there's also some important data that suggests that yes, the bottom potentially may be near. Now, on this tweet, I posted out in May 14th of 2022 and it's showing, and I'll show the chart here momentarily, but I'm gonna read the tweet. When bonds, okay, bonds begin outperforming commodities, so that means bonds have to begin outperforming commodities, utilities start typically outperforming the SPY on a relative basis. But at this time when I was posting it, the XLU was outperforming the SPY at the same time the CRB commodities were outperforming bonds. Now, this doesn't happen often, but it did in 1999 and 2008. It actually had a perfect correlation. So you can see here, boom, this was the chart that I was just showing you. And this is, I'll show you the updated one momentarily. In it had a perfect correlation in 1999. We also had that correlation there in 2008, 2007 ish area. And as it stands then, when I posted this, we had another perfect correlation. But with the changes in commodities that's taking place, where we're seeing commodities drop. And just recently, we just saw oil break this potential head and shoulders neckline over here is down 5.22% on the day. This to me is signaling that we may very well be near a recession, which I'll get into momentarily. But that move really made what happen? Well, it made commodities underperform bonds. So you can see this line is starting to go down. And that means that this line potentially can start to go up, which means utilities outperforms the S&P 500. And that correlation, as you can see, just recently broke right there. So this is the updated chart. Michael Guyad's beta rotation tool, you're looking at a four week rate of change. Okay, and when it gets basically above the zero marker over here and it has a weekly close there, it's more of a risk off behavior. And that's what we're really seeing in the markets. Okay, and risk off could suggest that, hey, you know, something more volatility can very well come. Now, this is another chart that I posted, and this is all going to tie in together, trust me. Uh, this was March 4th of 2022, and I'll show you the updated one momentarily. But what I called out here was rising oil prices, they've contributed to the last 40 years of recession. It has also contributed to the stock market peaks that resulted in bear markets. That was 1973, 87, 94, 2000, and 08. Do you really think that we'll be walking away from this one unscathed? And you could see here, I applied the rate of change, a 12, 
a month rate of change or a yearly rate of change. And every time we get up to around that 100 marker, we saw the 1987 crash, 1990 crash, dot com, the financial crisis, and then bam, 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 we started seeing this massive move over here. Now, if I update the chart, guess what? We're now at a negative rate of change and look at where price was and now where price is now. This could very well be signaling a potential recession up ahead. But now there's another chart that I want to go over that was a big warning sign. This was in December 28, 2022. And I talked about it prior. And if you've been here watching my videos, you've actually seen this chart a few times. The, what I tweeted was the place price goes on the BKX just before something bad happens is this red line right over here. For some reason, it's something that I noticed. And you can see here, the arrows are pointing at the financial crisis, Christmas Eve massacre, and then also the 2020 pandemic. And this is when I kind of tweeted this out because we were right up around that range there. And if I show you the updated chart, well, what happened? Well, now the banking index took this big hit. It's down 26.05%. So there was a lot of warning signs, okay? But now we need to talk more about the signs of, hey, could we very well be near a stock market bottom. So I want to bring you back to this chart. If you don't know this, this one is the business cycle. So it's the blue portion, right? The blue portion of this chart. So I'm looking at this and I've been thinking that we're in stage six transitioning to around stage one and potentially even to stage two. So when I look at this, I would imagine that we're right somewhere within this range over here and there could very well still be more downside, obviously, in recessionary phase, right? So if I look at this, Stage six is where I thought we came from. This is when bond stocks and commodities go down. That marks the deterioration in the economy as the business cycle prepares to move from an expansion phase to a contraction phase. And you can see that through that line right down the middle. Contract or Contraction is down here. Expansion is up here, okay? Okay, so stocks have already been moving lower. Commodities now turn lower in anticipation, decreased demand, and a deteriorating econo economy. Now we're starting to see really we're seeing a lot of stocks get hit, like the financials, right? We're seeing commodities get blown to smithereens, not just oil, right? We're seeing a bunch of them get hit, okay? And now if we go to stage one, what does this say? It says, shows the economy contracting and bonds turning up. Okay, so remember this. Okay, so shows the economy is contracting, bonds are turning up, interest rates are declining, economic weakness favors loose monetary policy, and the lowering of interest rates, which is bullish for bonds. Okay, now we already know that bond volatility has been firing off like a rocket ship. We covered that the other day. Well, bonds are starting to potentially turn here. Okay, this is, could be too early to tell as volatility is high, but these type of moves are suggesting something big can be underway. Well, as these go up, you can see yields coming down. So the last thing is really we're favoring the reduction of the effective federal funds rate. So when I look at the meeting probabilities, the Fed is trying to fight inflation. And if they stick to their guns, well, that can cause obviously more damage. But what we notice here in recent days after this financial debacle with all these banks, they're starting to price in the reduction of rates. So can this potentially mean that we may be very well coming into full recession mode? There's a lot of things signaling it. Like I already stated, you know, the outperformance of utilities potentially, right? That we have oil that's completely collapsing. We have bonds starting to outperform. So this could very well be telling us that we're now moving into a potential recession and then it's going to take some time, right? To potentially go into recovery. Now, this is where it gets interesting. As I stated, I've, sh I've showed you why we saw a market top and a potentially turn coming. But take a look at what stocks perform the best heading into a full-blown recession. Okay. It's technology, communication services, and discretionary. Now, it doesn't mean that these are going to perform and start to rip up higher, but they technically mean that they perform better from a relative standpoint in the S&P 500. And if I look at year-to-date performance, discretionary, communication services, and technology are the top performers. Boom, those three. So as we potentially are moving into full recession, we're starting to see some names get some steam and perform very well during amidst all this market volatility. So I wanted to show you just some of the stocks that are in, you know, one in technology, the big one, the big one in communication service, and the big one in discretionary. So we'll start with discretionary. 
Amazon, what does this chart look like? Well, it hasn't been falling, but it hasn't been going up. So this very well could potentially be just basing out. It could be in an accumulation phase. Now it still has a lot of work to go, but this could very well be basing out and telling us that, hey, yeah, we may get hit a little bit further if we get some volatility event, but the market may be trying to bottom here. Apple, what has this been doing for a, a year now? It, it's been going sideways, it hasn't been doing anything, and it's been holding up very well and miss all this volatility as well. Does that mean that it can't go down here? No, but even if it were to come right back down to the lows where it was in 2023, what is price doing? If price would just be in a range, potentially building a base to bottom out. Look at Meta. This is communications. Okay, communications. Meta has been a monster performer. It's currently, you know, breaking another high as it stands right here. Okay, so does this mean that it can't just fall right back down here and be like, oh, huh, see, no, you were wrong, right? It's not bottoming. It would have to fall probably way past 90, right? That would be gigantic. But even if it came down into this range, I mean, uh, even if it cut 50% of this run up, right? That's that's still potentially in the longer term. We look back at this in hindsight and be like, well, it was accumulation. It, you know, j digested. The market took a big vol hit during the whatever, whatever crisis, whoever knows. And it, it started potentially going back up. That's all I got for you, really, everybody. The last chart, that I want to share though, is that yes, we have not seen a volatility type event happen. And dating back to the nineties, every time we get a massive like bottom in the markets, we see a monster spike past the 40 marker. And I'm just showing you this here because the S and P 500, it went down, you know, from peak to trough, like 25% or so. And volatility hit just around 35. The pandemic, it shot up to 82.5. The China stock market market turbulence, that went over 40. Operation Twist in between 2011 and 2012, that that you know shot into the 40s to almost 50s. The financial crisis took us into the 80s. The dot-com bubble took us above the 40s. And then long-term capital management, when that blew up, it also was in the 40s. So as I stated, the, the market may very well be nearing a bottom as we're moving into a potential full blown recession. Now remember as we move into a full recession and you know that's when more fear, more panic, more everything takes place, it doesn't necessarily mean that other stocks can't be performing well. So that's what we need to be on the watch out for. Like I said, that's all I got for you on today's episode everybody. Have a wonderful night.